what is going on everyone i i just can't even speak them all this draft episode 70 first of all but this draft 2021 nfl first round was just ridiculous them all and i i, I don't even think we need an intro for it just because i think people who like watch the draft already know how ridiculous it was by far my most favorite draft tons of trades lots of surprising picks uh, especially uh, cough cough the raiders with their bad picks I don't even know how to intro this. I'm just in shock that the day that we finally wanted to happen actually happened. And it lived up to the hype of all, which is ridiculous. But before we jump into the draft and any news pertaining a, a man named Aaron Rodgers, I've I got to ask you, how are you doing? And how are you feeling about this draft, bro? I'm hyped. And I'm Marie Bumar, by the way, just in case you guys don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's up, Ariba? I'm feeling well. I'm feeling hyped i think this lived up completely uh to my expectations players fell uh we all expected players to fall surprising players but uh to begin with yeah i mean this was this was probably the best draft i've seen in a long time uh and it's uh and honestly it got even more attention because of news that came right before this NFL draft. Yeah, I mean, this news, this draft cycle, this day was just bonkers from the beginning. And we can just jump right into the news. The only yeah. news really worth talking about, unless you want to talk about t- uh, Tim Tebow converting to a tight end, which, again, <laughs> like he's like 35. Why is he still like even in he, talks? It's, it's he, flopped for, he flopped for baseball. I mean, I guess he has the Urban Mind connection. But anyway, Aaron Rodgers, he, he, uh, he went out to the Packers and he said, I want to get traded. And to, yes, to all Packers fans, I say, no, duh. Me and Amal literally called this literally the day after the NFC championship game. And the two teams we had in mind, Amal, were your Indianapolis Colts and the San Francisco 49ers. And also San Francisco 49ers, thank God. We'll talk about their pick, but dude, thank God they didn't screw that up. I've got to say, though, Aaron Rodgers, the news it makes perfect sense that he wants out. And the, the pick that they picked in this first round also like adds to that. Like, yeah, no duh, he wants out. The Packers don't know how to build around him and they don't know how to give him the proper leverage and input into how, into building a team that, you know, other elites like Tom Brady has. I'm sure even like Big Ben has some input in his team with the Steelers. But meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers' team still goes dilly-dallying around picking random corners who have no business being picked in the first round. Uh, no offense to Eric Stokes, but bro, what are they doing? I, I, like, it just makes sense that he wants out. And I guess people are shocked that he like actually asked for a trade, which is being reported from literally everyone, Rappaport, Schefter, your mom, like everyone knows Aaron Rodgers wants a trade. And it, it just makes sense to me. It's a little bit shocking that he came out right before the draft and did it, but I've just got to give everyone a big disclaimer. Aaron Rodgers is not getting traded. If he was going to get traded them all, he was going to get traded today because his value would have been multiple first round picks and an early first round picks. I'm thinking a team like the Broncos who had a number nine pick and had a quarterback prospect, uh, Justin Fields sitting on the pro- uh, sitting on the board. If he was going to get he was if he was going to get traded, he would have gotten traded today, and he would have gotten traded for a, a team with a team that had a high pick in the first round, so that they could have instantly gotten high value for him, and also. Like his dead cap is third thirty eight million dollars per year uh, for this year if he gets cut or traded, so he's just not getting moved this year. This to me, like he might hold out, but I think this to me was just him trying to warn the Packers that they should do the right thing and draft the right players, and they still screwed that up massively. <laughs> the Packers just they're uh, they're incompetent and they're great at wasting talent. I'm all, but yeah, I think th- that's my just initial takeaways from this Aaron Rodgers news. Just mostly like no duh. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like uh, Reeb said, we've called this for a while now. Uh, he indirectly kept on hinting that we already talked about it like even over a year ago that Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to retire with the Packers. He said it that clear exactly one year ago when we, in the first round we saw Jordan Love being picked. The shock of the draft, forget Jalen Hurts being picked, that is the shock of the draft at the end of the day. Jordan Love gave the Packers traded up to select Jordan Love. And then that's the ultimate sign of betrayal. They haven't drafted an offensive weapon in the past decade. And they chose it to pick Jordan Love. Um, just 
so they're not they they, they treat him they treat Aaron they're Rodgers in a as Super Bowl they, window as if, as if as if Aaron Rodgers they treated Aaron Rodgers as if he was just an employee of the team bro and or if he was what, Drew Brees or Big Ben as in like they're declining like yeah I guess Aaron Rodgers maybe you could say he declined from 2018 no 20 yeah 2018 no, but to I'm 2019. even saying they're not even what? treating him like as if he has any say like he's just an, like I said when I say he's an employee he's like a puppet like he just has to go with whatever the front the gms have to say he has no like input whatsoever in what's going on and i think that that goes to show his frustrations and obviously yeah now they're the packers are trying to give him an extension and everything like what took you guys so long and apparently news broke out even also this evening that the packers apparently in january in february after they uh lost to um to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they said they said to Aaron Rodgers they were planning to tr- move him this off season, and then after that, Aaron, they didn't move him. Obviously, they they kept him. He won the MVP and everything, and now he says he wants out. And now the Packers are like, shoot! I since we we're, we don't know how we feel about Jordan Love right now, let's keep him. Uh, and now the Packers are now working on an extension. I think it's just like. The, the, the Packers are being indecisive. It, it's not it, – this is some shit I expect from the Bears. I don't expect this from the Green Bay Packers, man. Uh, and the Bears today, we're going to talk about it. The Bears probably were the winners of this draft so far. Uh, we'll get into that. But, I mean, it, it, like, I, I, I can't believe I, – I really cannot believe the dysfunction that's going on with uh, this Green Bay Packers organization – Kind of reminds me, I told the Reeb of the Brett Favre situation. No quarterback has played 17 years with the, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, they've all cut off at exactly 16. Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and now it'll be Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has made it clear that he will no longer, he's no longer interested in being part of the Green Bay Packers franchise. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this escalates. Uh, I to me, Amal, I think it's a stalemate from both sides. Because if Aaron Rodgers legitimately, you think it'll be like play, the, it'll be. You think it'll be like Deshaun Watson, where he'll just hold it would out. just be a stalemate because like yeah. the Packers have no incentive to move him because first of all, the draft is like the the main part of the draft is over, so you can you can trade him for future first round picks, right? Of but course, at, yeah. at this point, like which team is quarterback needy right now? Like, I don't think any team is like all the, like maybe the Steelers, right? The I think Steelers, the Niners are still, the, the Niners are still a team that's still up to come for contention. Nah, they were dude. always going to, they were always going to give up back. three first round picks and draft a quarterback, Trey Lance, and then be like, psych, we're going to trade you away. Oh, they might not even be able to trade him because like, they have Jordan, the Packers have Jordan Love. This to me is a stalemate because the Packers are not going to trade him because first of all, they brought almost their entire team back a month. They're going into win now mode, running it back for the third season, trying to cross that NFC championship hurdle and get into a Super Bowl win, win at least make the Super Bowl this year, right? And Aaron Rodgers was part of that plan. So first of all, they have no incentive from a game planning st- uh, stance like of trading Aaron Rodgers. Then Definitely. money wise, negative thirty eight million dollars if they tried to trade in this season and then like i don't think they could get any draft capital that is worth aaron Rodgers. and then aaron Rodgers right now he's pretty much giving them an ultimatum give me a good long-term deal and i want you to choose me over jordan love and, right? and that now that that's gone too and that's also gone because like i just don't see it. the yeah i just don't see how either side can come out of this victorious i've got to say i think the packers are probably better off of the two parties because like whatever you can say about Aaron Rodgers, if Aaron Rodgers holds out, they have a young, talented quarterback on the bench who you're going to give him reps eventually, starting reps. But it, okay, it's, fine, it's you high start risk. the plan. It's high risk, though. That's the problem. The Packers. You can say the Packers are winning off right now, but if Jordan Love doesn't pan off, then it's going to be extremely, extremely, extremely bad. And that's gonna, that's gonna, and if that turns out to be the case, and Jordan Love isn't the guy. Uh, and Jordan Love only lasts like two games, <laughs> and they know immediately. Oh, oh shit! What, what do we do here? Um, and if that's the case, then you then you're screwed. And it's uh, just a, it's just a terrible situation overall. But yeah, I I, I can the see, Packers I can have see mismanaged this. I can see a scenario where the Packers can are better off, and they'll just hold it and and keep on grinding it out until uh, Aaron Rodgers finally buys in. 
but I Who think knows, uh, though maybe Jeopardy really is Aaron Rodgers' true calling and he'll retire. Yeah, I, I, but I, I expect Aaron Rodgers to, I, I if he doesn't, he has trade, to play sometime in 2021. If he wants a contract year for 21, 21 to go, I don't through, think he needs it though. That, no, Cause Jeopardy in 2022, Amal, in Jeopardy 2022 kicks in, dude, he doesn't true, need it. But, in 2020, then he's just retiring. He's just admitting, you know what, I'm done playing football. Because in 2022, Amal, his the Packers have an out for him, his contract. So in 2021, if he plays, you know, if he, he plays most of the season, I think it's like, I think it's eight games where that counts as a contract year. If he plays those eight games, then okay, in 2022, he can be moved pretty easily, cut, traded, or whatever it might be. I just think... I don't know. This situation is just ridiculous. I just think right now it's like no duh. He was he wants to get he wants to leave. I think by the deadline he gets moved. Honestly, I do believe the trade that. deadline. Okay, trade deadline. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, know. I highly that's, doubt. That's a long way from now. I said I told you before that it would be off season. Off season, I think is more likely. But I think. Uh, I, I just think it makes no sense. They the can't deadline. do it with money, and they can't trade Jordan Love either because Jordan Love is a huge cap hit as well. It's no, they just can't like, trade. They can't trade Love. I think Love is probably untrade. He's probably the only guy that's untradeable on their yeah, team. Yeah, I, I mean, just overall, Ma, they have mismanaged the situation. And I'm done talking about Aaron Rodgers. Let's hop into the draft because yeah. the Go draft to me was the most exciting thing. First pick overall for the uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And before yeah. we hop into this draft, bro, again, this draft was phenomenal. It we'll just, give our had grades we each for each of these picks. Yeah, we'll give our letter grades, um, all 32 picks. Spoiler alert, some of these picks are going to be good and some of them are going to be dog water. And I think you'll know immediately from the initial drafts. And uh, our like mock drafts as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, let's just hop into it. With the first overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars, like the Trevor Lawrence, A-plus pick. I mean, it was obvious. He was pretty commonly known as the, like, the consensus first overall pick and not the best quarterback in this year's class makes sense has the production he's a winner great arm all, all the intangibles can move i mean this is not even we don't even need to talk about this as much it was the, the go-to pick made perfect sense yeah i mean this was easy uh a plus pick uh we knew this pick a week 17 so um no surprises there uh the they got their guy, and I'm excited. Even though they're in my division in the AFC South, they're going to be a competitive Jacksonville team. Maybe not initially, but uh, I expect them to really be competing with the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts uh, for years to come. Agreed. Now with the second overall pick, the uh, New York Jets selected Zach Wilson out of BYU, the quarterback. Again, it's like an A. It, it's just an A pick for me. I think Zach Wilson does have some flaws. I think he does have some injury history, but overall, probably the best arm in this year's class. He can do a lot of ad-libbing thing, off-balance stuff. A great pick for them. They needed a quarterback after losing Sam Darnold. I just hope, and they did go out and trade up in the set with their second first-round pick to help protect Zach Wilson because I think you need to protect him and help open up run games. And I think they're going to go with a running back in the second round to help that because they just need to – improve that offense make sh- take off some pressure off zach wilson maybe even draft some more weapons after they got in Corey davis and free agency i think overall what they did in the first round i love it they compare a potential all pro tackle with an all pro guard in both elijah vera tucker and the first round pick from last year whose name escapes me currently but they they, they can do a lot uh makai becton they can they, i think they can do a lot there and i like that pick for them yeah, so um, for me, I'm actually going to give it slightly. I'm going to give it a B plus. And my only thing that's not like for him not being justified as the second pick in the draft, I think my only thing with him, Arib, and it's going to fall also for this Trey Lance pick as well. Uh, the, the competition was really low. I mean, uh, I was listening to first take today. He played against teams, Arib, it's not Alabama. It's Northern <sighs> Alabama. Like, like his like, hardest opponent it's not even louisiana thing. state it's louisiana tech like he's, he's he's houston football like i'm just saying like they're not he's not playing against elite competition that being said there's been some great players that came out of byu um i believe steve young came out of byu as well so hey don't forget about kellen moore elite kellen BYU moore. quarterback yeah i mean so i i should know uh, was he he was boy he was boise but still uh, another that's the same great conference, low level, yeah, qu- yeah, yeah like state. another great low level quarterback yeah. So, but uh, but I think he has his his arm talent's incredible. Uh, he, yeah. Just he's he's in, he had an incredible season altogether. 
uh, but yeah, the, I think I think they got their man in Zach Wilson, and I think they thought of Zach Wilson similar to Aaron Rodgers because the Lafleur that's on the on the Jets, I believe he's the offensive coordinator for the Jets. I believe now, I think he thought of Aaron Rodgers when he uh, saw Zach yeah, Wilson. Michael I think Floor. that's what made that pick locked in uh, locked in for a while now with Zach Wilson being at number two. Yeah, and talking about the Lafleur brothers. I've just got to say, I'm all when they made this pick, when the San Francisco 49ers picked Trey Lance, the quarterback out of NDSU, third overall, I literally audibly just screamed, Thank God to the heavens. Cause, cause I, actually, gone... I actually don't mind the Niners. And they're actually, they're, they're a pretty competent franchise. John Lynch is actually the man. Uh, so I, I, I actually don't mind them out of all the, out of all the teams in the NFL. So I'm actually happy that they did this. Yeah, and this pick makes a ton of sense because they get the best running quarterback in this year's class. And you compare that with all of Kyle Shanahan's innovative run game schemes, his zone game. Uh, I mean, the run game was already elite them all. Adding in Trey Lance is going to make it even more elite. He definitely has the high ceiling in this year's quarterback class. And guess what? He's not going to have to start immediately. All the Jimmy Garoppolo is getting traded rumors. Guess what? He didn't. And also, just shout out to them for the biggest smoke screen of 2021. Because everyone thought Mac Jones. I called Mac it though this Mac morning, Jones. Arib. This morning, did. I did. Say, I, did. I, I thought I thought it would be between. So. I thought it would be between Fields and Lance, and I've got to say, thank God it was one of the two, and it wasn't Mac Jones. Because yeah. you have to draft for ceiling, and what Kyle Shanahan realized is, you know what, my system is really good, but I haven't won a Super Bowl yet with my system, and I've got to default sometimes to getting superior athletes and people with high Incredible ceilings. Athlete incredible athlete you need to go with the athletic super ceiling the athletic ceiling rather and he realized that that's the play to go and guess what maybe mac jones he plays better in system in rhythm he, he can run the system better than trey lance can right but if the system fails then mac jones fails but trey lance gives you the ability to where if the system does fail guess what trey lance is still so damn athletic and he has such a high ceiling that if he hits it doesn't matter if the system fails because Trey Lance can make up for that. And Mac Jones couldn't. And again, I just thank God they made this pick. Thanks. Honestly, also another thing here, honestly, don't, I think the Niners would have been, to be honest, they'd be good with any of these quarterbacks because they're in the best situation in the entire league. Oh, I agree. But, Cause Kyle Shanahan so, is so phenomenal. Man. Exactly. I mean, so I, I mean, like Kyle, like with, with Trey Lance, obviously the experience is a weakness there tight window passes uh mechanics are itself are kind of an issue there but the athleticism and and by the way Reeve, I mean, yeah he's had little games but he's only thrown one pick and that's this past year in this yeah. one game of the season so it, he's he doesn't throw a lot of picks he doesn't take uh, a lot of risk but he he's just too mobile too great of an athlete i'm gonna give this an a grade actually even though yeah. the experience is not there with him it's a raw athlete and even though he's raw, he's not going to be starting immediately. And it's a project player that I know with Kyle Shanahan can blossom. Yeah. And the way I see this small is the two best play callers, right? We've known who the two best offensive play callers are in the NFL. It's Kyle Shanahan and it's Andy Reid. Andy Reid, he has his guy. If the, if the system fails and if the play goes to hell, he has his guy to where, you know what? I can rely on one of the best quarterbacks in the league to bail me out of this hell. Kyle Shanahan never had that, and he's going to get the same ability. And it's literally the same scenario back to back. Them all two teams that are really good traded up in the first round to draft both high risk, high massive risk but to, yeah. to draft highly athletic players with high ceilings, and they have pretty competent starting quarterbacks. I'm going to say Alex Smith is definitely far better than Jimmy Garoppolo, but you definitely, have players yeah. to where you don't have to rush them. And I think Amal, the, the most important thing I think to developing any player, not even just quarterbacks is you just need to give these guys time. Like for example, Penny Sewell is literally like 20. You think a 20 year old is going to mature into his body and learn how to become a better player in one year. No, give him two, three years, give them patience. And we saw patience worked out for Mahomes. We saw patience worked out for Aaron Rodgers. Hell, patience worked out for Tom Brady. Yeah, he's a six-round pick, but guess what? He wasn't thrown into the fire immediately. He was able to hone his craft a little bit, and boom, when he actually got to play, he was he was exceptional. And I just think the same thing happens here. I love the trade Lance to North Dakota, uh, the trade Lance to San Francisco a pick. Again, just thank God it happened to Mahomes. Yeah, I think uh, 
I, I genuinely do believe that. Uh, I, I don't know if he'll play in the next year, two years. I think probably in the next two years he probably won't play. And I think he's okay with that. I think he's willing to learn. And I think uh, he's going to take that Jordan Love type of role and just uh, sit back and uh, stay ready. Agreed. And if he does, if Jimmy G something happens to him, guess what? He's still not going to be. He's okay. He might not even still be thrown in because they have CJ Beathard. They have Nick Maul. I don't know if they. And have those CJ guys Beathard. are not even. Those guys won't and be. Those back guys are fine. Yeah. Exactly. 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 You just need a healthy defense. The, the, the Niners' entire success all is based on mm-hmm. health. So they if, have a uh, Super Bowl window right now, Maul, with Jimmy Garoppolo. And after they move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. They're going to have an even more extended because they're going to have a Trey Lance on a rookie deal. They'll have a stacked team around him. They'll be able to pay the guys like Nick Bosa around him, uh, Fred Warner. I think it's just overall, it's an A plus pick. If it was either Trey Lance or Justin Fields, it would have been A plus pick for me. And I'm just happy it was one of the two. Um, now, with the fourth overall pick, the Atlanta Falcons drafted Kyle Pitts out of Florida. ESPN gives us an A. I'd probably give this an A minus a mall just because I think. Okay, the, the biggest needs on, for me was on defense. That being said, there's no defensive players worth taking here. The first defensive player was eight in the Carolina Panthers for J, uh, with J.C. Horn. I think Kyle Pitts, he's going to eventually be be the heir, the heir apparent to uh, Julio Jones. And I think right now you get a really explosive offense for an offensive coordinator and an offensive mind in Arthur Smith. So I give it a, I give it a decent grade, like an A-. minus. I'm giving it still an A because uh... – I know Reeb had in his big board, and uh, I will. I also have on my big board. Kyle Pitts is the best player in this draft, uh, without a question. And he, he, his talent, you just can't miss on that talent that that Kyle Pitts brings to the game. He's more Megatron, honestly, than even a tight end. I think he. he he's, he's an just, offensive weapon, man. He's, that's he's all. That's his, la- his label is that he's yeah, not a wide exactly. receiver. He's not a tight end. He can do everything. He can do, he can do everything, and. Uh, just to have that on your team, the Falcons have the now. I can officially say, forget the Buccaneers. I think the Falcons now have the best receiving core in football, uh, with uh, with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and now Kyle Pitts. Three dudes that are quite frankly unguardable when they're all. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you can and Russell Gage and all like and, they have uh, four. They have Russell, like, Russell Gage. Gage is a competent player too. He's gone for Zacchaeus, they have they have so many different options there uh in Atlanta. So the rest of their draft better be defense though. Yeah, That's I, all I, I can say. Yeah. Either that or you go running back and try to like fully get their Derrick Henry Javante and like Javante Williams. Williams. Yeah. And that to me is their their number one pick for me should be Javante Williams in the second round or like Trayvon Morig or someone like that. They do got to work on that. JOK. Defense, yeah. Uh, next. Yeah. Yep. Fifth overall with the fifth overall pick, the Cincinnati Bengals uh, drafted Jamar Chase wide receiver out of LSU. We hit on this before, Amal, and, and I think in our like just text or whatever, the best version of Jamar Chase was with Joe Burrow and the best version of Joe Burrow was with Jamar Chase. Both of them played together in 2019 in Joe Burrow's Heisman year in the LSU's championship year. And I think the best version of both these players are going to come out. I don't think Jamar Chase could have gone to a better spot. I think Joe Burrow has the chemistry with him. He knows how he likes his deep balls thrown. He knows where he wants his like curl balls thrown. He knows when uh, Jamar Chase is going to break out of his routes. That chemistry is already there. And you said the Falcons have the best receiving core. I think the Bengals have a legitimate claim like a year from now or two years from now with Jamar Chase, yeah, yeah, with T Higgins, now, yeah. with, yeah. uh, with Boyd over there. I and think Jamar Chase, yeah. it's just their ceiling. And I I've got to say, they've got to go offensive line in the second round and there have a lot of players who fell who I think can fill that hole. So I was initially like shitting on this pick when it happened. We're not shitting on it. I'd, I'd give it an a minus right now, but I Ooh, think really, what would you give it? Yeah, so I'm giving this C plus, maybe even C. See, the reason the reason I'm not a mall is because of how the tackle board fell. Initially, because I was like the tackle board, you know what? They needed a tackle. They didn't go one. I'm gonna give this like a B plus. It's a great player, right, but, but I think they had a bigger need. The tackle board is the still tackle there. board fell how they wanted it to, and I think they knew that they're gonna get some good tackles in the second round, and that's why I think wide receiver and tackle are both extremely deep. 
And I think tackle both those positions actually didn't get taken as much as we thought on the first round. And I think getting an offensive tackle, you're going to get like a Tevin Jenkins could legitimately be their pick who I had as my offensive tackle three, my 11th ranked player on the board. He could legitimately be their pick and he's going to fix their problems immediately. Or if they want to go into your offensive line, Creed Humphrey or Landon Dickerson out of Alabama and Oklahoma respectively. I just think what we know now with hindsight bias, I think it's an A pick because I think you're making your offense even better and you're giving, you used to have room to improve that offensive line, which I think was the real need. Yeah, so the reason that I gave it a C plus is it's not even, yet of course, Jamar Chase, the that connection is definitely there uh, with Joe Burrow. So of course that's going to, that's going to sway uh, the Bengals front office and everything to make, make Joe Burrow happy. But I think protection at the end of the day was the reason why I believe the Bengals tanked to begin with. And I thought, yes, the, the, it is true there. It just so happened that there are better offensive tackles right now, O-linemen in this draft. And we'll grade that pick when it comes to that pick. Like, what if Tevin Jenkins doesn't make it there? What if they don't even pick those guys that we just talked about, right? So that's all hypotheticals. And also, I thought Penny Sewell was a guaranteed lock. He was going to be a pro bowler, I think. I think he's the type of guy that I expected to protect Joe Burrow because that old lineman, that old line would kill Joe Burrow, bro. I mean, and I'm saying this because I saw Andrew Luck go through the same thing. And you could, of course, surround him with Jamar Chase. Andrew Luck had T.Y. Hilton. I'm Jamar Chase is miles better than T.Y. Hilton. This early on, I can even see that. But I'm just saying, like, it's just you, you, you with even with all these weapons, you still need to have a good, solid foundation. And that O line definitely still needs a lot of help. And they could have easily gotten a receiver in the second round. You're talking about the O lineman in the second round, but there's also really good receivers in the second round too. Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore. Uh, are still in the second round so I, I i i mean i'm gonna i could have gone even lower uh i know a couple Damn. of websites like me and you are really different yahoo yahoo sports gave it an f bleacher report gave it an f uh cbs sports gave it a d i'm i'm not gonna be like that i i still would have it as a c plus because jamar chase is the best receiver in this class uh by a by a pretty good uh, margin and he is unguardable. Uh, he's probably the best receiver prospect since I'd say Amari Cooper or even Julio Jones out of uh, Alabama. So I'm a fan of the pick in that aspect that they got an explosive wide receiver. But I, I, I am just not a yeah. A You're a fan, fan of the player, not the position. Makes yeah, sense. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Jamar Chase. Yeah. With the sixth overall pick, the Miami Dolphins selected Jalen Waddle, the wide receiver out of Alabama. I'll give this a B plus a mole. I think the Dolphins could have afforded to upgrade their offensive line a little bit more. That being said, their biggest problem last year, I don't really think it was protecting Tua. I think it was Tua taking shots downfield and trying to trust his wide receivers. First of all, they had the Alabama chemistry. Both of them played in Alabama in last year in 2019. And Jalen Waddle was good then. And I think Jalen Waddle is going to be good now. They had the Alabama chemistry. We thought that maybe they would go Devontae Smith if they really wanted Alabama chemistry, which is why I would probably knock this pick, which is why I wouldn't give it an A because I think Devontae Smith is the player I would have picked. But I think when it comes down to it, you needed explosiveness on that offense. And what a be- what better way to you know ex- improve your explosiveness as a team than by drafting the most explosive wide receiver. If you need deep separation for Tua, Jalen Waddle is going to be the best deep center operator in this year's class. When it comes to a pure, pure speed aspect, I think Jamar Chase is better, but I think for someone like Tua, I think that chemistry with Jalen Waddle is going to be more important. Great speed. Guess what? If you need more explosiveness, throw it to him short, deep, middle, give him some hand, uh, handoffs, end arounds. I think overall, I'd give it a B plus. I would have picked Devontae Smith, but overall you're improving the explosiveness of your offense, which is what I loved. And I, I think I, I like what the, I, I like what Miami did with their second pick too as well. But I really like this first round pick for them. Uh, first overall pick, I guess, uh, the sixth pick. And I, I think I like what they did by explo- uh, improving the explosiveness of their offense. And I think if they really want to improve like their offensive line say, I think they could have done that in the second round. Um, and they could have done that comfortably. So I think I know where you're going to follow this, similar to the Bengals, though. Uh, here, I'm, I'm going to give it slightly higher than the Bengals. I'm going to give it a B-minus. 
uh, could even go B, but I'll probably go B minus here. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm going to say that is Jalen Waddle. I'm a, I'm a fan of Jalen Waddle. I think he can be a better wide receiver than Devontae Smith, uh, who I thought was a better pick for them here. But I think that I think Tua and Waddle, I think you can read here in ESPN's post draft analysis. Tua and Waddle connected for nearly 800 yards at Alabama, and that's Waddle's sophomore And, year. dude, Waddle yeah. wasn't a full-time starter. Exactly. He was sitting behind Devontae Smith, behind Jerry Judy, and He's behind – Henry uh, Ruggs. Henry, Henry Ruggs. Ruggs had his job. And Henry Ruggs was the speedster. So, Jalen yeah. Waddle wasn't on the field all that much. Exactly. So, um, they have Waddle, Fuller, and Parker. And I think uh, – I think Fuller and Parker, I mean, I, I think Fuller. They think fill the two, outside wide receiver roles for they, sure. They fill those outside wide receiver roles. And Jalen Waddles, like, you know, that Jakeem Grant type of guy uh, that they also have, but he's a better version, essentially. Of Significantly that. better. Like way better version of Jakeem Grant. And, and hey, you don't need to risk Jalen Waddles' health. Grant. And you don't need to, at. yeah, you don't need to risk Jalen Waddle's health by making him return punts because he's d- dynamic there. Because you already have a dynamic punt returner in Jakeem Grant. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I just like this pick overall. That's why I'm giving it a B plus probably. Uh, yeah. I think you get the Alabama chemistry. It wasn't the Alabama chemistry that I would have preferred, but I think overall you're improving the explosiveness of your offense. This is what you needed to do because your offense was frankly just not explosive at all. Yeah, they could have gone. They could have gone multiple ways here. They could have gone Waddle. Mm-hmm. They could have gone Smith. They could have even gone uh, Panay Sewell, who fell to the next pick. Uh, but yeah, that I mean, the that that's the only th- reason I have it as B minus. And also the injury concern. We still yeah. have we haven't seen Waddle play at a high level for quite some time. So uh, just that in de- that kind of uh, question mark is there. Otherwise, great pick. With the seventh overall pick, the Detroit Lions p- picks Panay Sewell. Panay Sewell. The offensive tackle out of Oregon. I love this pick for them. I'm, I'm going to give it an A plus because he was, I think at that point, he was taking the quarterbacks out of consideration. Yeah, he was my best player on the board at that point. I have him ranked at three, taking the top five quarterbacks out because obviously if you're putting quarterback needs up, then they're top five. Uh, he was my third ranked player outside of quarterback. And I think if you're looking at their offensive line right now, Amal, First of all, they're off the the long for the longest time. The one stat that was always told about the stupid Detroit Lions for like five years was that they didn't they had went like five years without a 100 yard rusher, right? And then eventually, Carryon Johnson came in from Auburn and he broke that. But then he got hurt. Then they brought in DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift played pretty well. They have Jamal Williams now as well. But I think as you're gonna first of all, you're gonna improve your offensive line by drafting Panay Sewell, right? Their starting offensive line is Taylor Decker at left guard, Jonah Jackson at left guard, Frank Ragno, who I think is an all pro center. Uh, they have, they moved Big V Halapulu Vati Vitae to right guard, and he again, I, I know him as an Eagles fan, he's extremely versatile. I think he can play pretty good guard play, and then Panay Sewell, who I think can be a legitimate cornerstone at right tackle or. In the future, if you want to move him to left tackle, because Taylor Decker is a little bit older, if you want to do that, then go for it. I think you're improving your offensive line to where you can improve your running game, and it's just a cornerstone piece. And also, you don't have a mobile quarterback in Jared Goff. I think you're protecting him and letting him stay in the pocket for longer. I think their biggest need right now is 100% wide receiver. And I was talking to my friend Arian and Chase, and both of them want to go wide receiver, actually. I believe in the second round or third round, they have some good prospects there. And that's why I think this is a great pick for me. A plus best player on the board. I think they can improve their wide receiver core later on. They want best player and they're going to, I think they're going to keep Jared Goff upright. Cause if Jared Goff gets hurt, then they're essentially banking for the first overall pick again. Yeah. So um, I gave it an A plus as well. The, my main thing here is like you said, he can play right tackle and left tackle because he trained over this off season to and throughout when because he uh throughout yeah this offseason he's been working really hard on playing both the right the blocking from the right and left side and uh yeah if taylor decker taylor decker is wanting to play left he can gladly take the right side and he can play that cornerstone role for that uh lines offensive line uh great pick i have nothing else further to say this would if, if sewell fell further than this uh it would be shocking considering just about like a year ago, I, I didn't see Sewell falling out to the top three, let alone 
like top five. I, I mean, the, the dude is just that special. I, I'm just uh... and Amal. He never played a game in college where he was in his 20s. He was 19 for all his two seasons in college. Exactly. He opted out for his junior year. Never even hit 20. He's extremely raw. I love the pick for them. Now with the eighth overall pick, the Carolina Panthers selected J.C. Horn out of South, South Carolina, and I believe them all. They they went full defense last year with I think all seven of their. Uh, their picks last year in the 2020 NFL draft. They continue that look here. I'd probably give this an A pick because uh, I think I like, first of all, they needed cornerback help, right? Their cornerbacks right now were Dante Jackson, another former LSU, I think second rounder, uh, AJ Boya, who was suspended. And then you put JC Horn out in that cornerback one role. And if you look at the NFC, uh, the NFC West, right? The number one wide receivers. First of all, we have Kyle Pitts. JC Horn did a pretty good job covering Kyle Pitts in college when they faced off. And then you have Julio Jones, same team. Then you have Michael Thomas. Then you have um, who do the Carolina, well, the Carolina Panthers. It's on the Carolina Panthers. I forget the other team, uh, the Bucks, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. You need to improve your defense, I think, to keep up with that and make the game somewhat on a level playing field. And I think J.C. Horn gives that. He was my cornerback number one in this year's class. He is a bit handsy at times, but I think that's something you can coach him out of. And I think he can help your defense like hold these other explosive offenses in the NFC West to sort of a reasonable amount. Because I think Sam Darnold, I think offensively, Amal, their only real needs right now are offensive line for me. And I think if they can fix that offensive line problem and maybe get another wide receiver in the third round like a slot wide receiver i really like this and i think going best player available for me and improving that defense even more in a high flying offense was definitely a smart play to go wasn't the play that i was expecting but now looking back at it i really like it uh, and, and that's why i'd give it a probably an a yeah i'd probably give this a b um the reason i'd give it a b is because i thought there were better players that the panthers could have gone in Rashawn Slater and Abel. Rashawn Rashawn Slater is the main dude here. Uh, and but yeah, I, I thought that that offensive line hole was quite big. And they the the Panthers do have Dante Jackson and AJ Boye. Uh, AJ Boye is under suspension, so he he'll have that that going with uh, attached with him. But so the quarterback need was a need. Uh, I don't know if it was the number one need. Like I said before, that offensive line was uh, a big need. And also, but I was happy with this pick though, mainly because they chose to be committed to Sam Darnold. They could have easily here, easily, very easily here taken Justin Fields, and I would have no problem with it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you wouldn't either. And, but it, it's just the it's just the fact that they they truly believe that Sam Darnold's the guy, and uh, they they said. JC Horn looks like to be the best defensive prospect and he can truly help our franchise. And uh, I'm okay with that pick JC Horn and Patrick Sertain were both very close uh, one and two for me for corners. Uh, I had Sertain one, you had uh, Horn one. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it is very close, um, but yeah, uh, this dude's a complete, he's a lock. He's a clamp. So I, that the only reason it's a low grade is because I thought, they need an uh, offensive line will help more. With the ninth overall pick, I'm all the Detroit. Then the, with the ninth okay. overall pick, the Denver Broncos. This like pick oh, out God, of Alabama. And you said, I'm all what you just said for the Carolina Panthers. You're happy they committed to Sam Darnold. Right. And out of Denver, this entire offseason, all we've heard is they're frustrated with Drew Locke and they, they're trying to get new quarterbacks. They're and trying they're to the, move they're in the Drew Deshaun, Locke. This draft, they're trying to they're move. They're in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. They're in the Russell Wilson sweepstakes. It, they're in the Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes. Right. And then overall, guess what? They have, in my opinion, the third best quarterback, maybe second best, maybe even your first best quarter, corner, quarterback available. Right. At pick nine, didn't have to trade up for him in Justin Fields from Ohio State. And, and many what you people decided to do, to. And I thought that was a home run pick, right? And instead of doing that and resetting and realizing, you know what, maybe Drew Lock isn't the guy and going all in with another quarterback and fixing. I mean, if you get the quarterback right, your team is set and their, their team is already really good. I'm all, instead of doing that, they pussied out. And they went out and decided to stay with Drew Lock, even though they're clearly not well, happy. They're not with Drew stay, they're not staying with Drew Lock because they also picked Teddy Bridgewater, bro. And that's a competition waiting to happen right there. And Teddy Bridgewater. Instead of instead of 
It doesn't make any Instead sense. Instead of freaking drafting the guy who has the highest ceiling, one of the highest ceilings in this draft class, they went out and decided, oh, you know what, Teddy Bridgewater, he fits that hole perfectly. Like, bro, shut Let's the move on up. from the need. Yeah, like what? That doesn't make any this, sense. If, in my opinion, the Denver Broncos should be disbanded for this pick. They should no longer exist. George Payton, who's the new GM after a longtime GM there, uh, Elway, John Elway, s- stepped down. He just puts it out, bro. Uh, and I get it. Cornerback is a need, right? For their quarterbacks, and just looking back to the good old Saxonville days, right? They won, and they won, not Saxonville, the no fly zone. Looking back to that 2015 defense that won a Super Bowl. First of all, they had a tenacious fat pass rush, which I believe they can sort of recreate, right? And I, I don't know what what's going on with Von Miller's situation. If Von Miller comes back, then I believe, yeah, you can recreate to some extent with Bradley Chubb, you can recreate a bit of that pass rush. You need to improve the corners because in that Saxonville defense, you had, uh, Bradley Roby, you had Chris Harris, you had Akib Talib, uh, and, and instead, you know what? You've lost those guys, right? You brought in Kyle Fuller. Now you have Patrick Sertain playing outside corner with Ronald Darby. Yeah, I get it. Your defense is going to be really damn good right now. But I think here, it's clearly obvious you're frustrated with corner quarterback, and I don't think Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater wasn't good enough for the Panthers to keep him. They're like, you know what? We're going to get rid of him for a sixth round pick. And we're fine running with Sam Donald, who's extremely unproven. He was, if he wasn't good enough for another team, why do you think he's going to fill your quarterback need? Uh, like, it's just so obvious that they're frustrated with Drew Luck. And they just, again, they pussied out. And for me, this isn't, first, this is just looking at their team in a vacuum. This is an A pick for me. But just taking into account who was on the board with, uh, with, Justin Fields, I'm giving it an F minus. If there's something below an F minus, like is there an E grade, G grade? I don't know. They're getting whatever that grade is. Uh, there's U for unsatisfactory, I believe, in college. Uh, U, I think, is. Uh, is I'm just going to give them like a DD for disband them. And it's going to be disband dumb with another D. I just think they shouldn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. So um, in a vacuum, I give it an A pick as well. Uh, they, since the fact they still address the need, um, I'm going to give them a C minus. Uh, I, I could, go, ah, yeah, I'll give it a C minus because they still at least address the need. Um, but I, the pick still made no sense. They, they were, they were so many times Denver was trying to trade up. They weren't trying to trade up for Kyle Pitts. That's for damn sure. They were trying to trade up for Justin Fields. We knew that from the beginning, the Denver Broncos are trying to trade up for Kyle Pitts. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. It, it Why were they sense. in the damn Aaron Rodgers rumors if they didn't want a damn quarterback to replace uh, Drew Locke? Uh, it, does, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's very frustrating if you're a Broncos fan right now. Uh, you I'm don't sure they're know, depressed. You don't, you, don't, you don't know what direction they're going. That's my main thing. Do you want to have Drew Locke? Do you want? Do you not want to have Drew Locke? Do you want Teddy Bridgewater be your starting word? Do you not want Teddy Bridgewater? Do you want to pussy out? Do you want to? Do you, like, like I don't. I really don't know what's going on with, with what uh, John Elway and this group's thinking. So, I, I'm. Tr- I, there were I, some bad picks in this in this first round of all. I think this was the worst one. I think it's. Un- I, I, I think. I think. I think it's up there. I, well, there's some really bad picks to that we'll, we'll see coming up. But uh, this was a pretty bad pick. I'll 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 make it lower. Actually, I'll put D plus for uh, Patrick Sertan. Uh, not because of him as a player. I think he's cornerback one for me, uh, and I think he will succeed. He's with uh, Kyle Fuller, and I believe he. They also got um, the Eagles dude. Uh, what's his face? Um, Ronald Darby. Ronald Darby. So I, I think uh, that'll be a cool tandem to have. Uh, but yeah. Because it's just going to be a, it's going to be a situation where it could have been like, what could it have been? Like they're going to want Justin Fields in Chicago and they're going to be like, if he plays well and Drew Locke plays bad, then I, I don't see a way that Vic Vangio keeps his job, the head coach of the Broncos. I don't see a way that George Payton keeps his job. I just don't see how it works out for them. And but now anyway, Reeb, yeah. it's the time. The 10th overall it's pick, buddy. You take and the first, the floor the first, is first okay, first damn trade in this year's NFL draft. Okay, so to preface this, the Eagles were at the 12th overall pick. The Dallas Cowboys were at the 10th overall pick. We saw a rare collective union of two division teams where they both decided to give a collective middle finger to the New York Giants Giants. and say, just my dick, Giants. Dude, they literally just said, just 
F you, get the hell out of here. They middle fingered them and they just like get the hell out of our draft board. Both of them, both of them were like, you know what? Screw you. We hate you, Joe Judge. Just change your last name, bro. You're not a judge. Yeah, but, okay. They traded up. And when this happened to Ma, I screamed. I legitimately audibly screamed. And uh, I think, okay, the Eagles friends. traded up from 12 to 10 and picked Devontae Smith, wide receiver out of Alabama. Hallelujah, bro. I'm not even Christian, but I don't care right now. <sighs> the biggest problem with the Carson Wentz led Eagles was that Howie Roseman and the Eagles failed to put a competent, supporting cast around him for a long time in 2017 yeah he had a great supporting cast after that it fell off right they failed to put a good supporting cast after him and then they realized with jalen hurts now guess what maybe we should and they realized the harry roseman had the awareness to be like guess what the giants who's who are picking at 11 might pick wide receiver right and I don't. I think that would have been a meh pick for me personally because i think they had sterling shepherd they have darius slay and they have kenny Galladay. But I could have understood it. And they had the awareness. They're like, you know what? Let's trade up. We'll give our second third round pick, not even our first. And we'll move up, pick Devontae Smith. And they just realized from their Carson Wentz mistakes, they're not repeating them with Jalen Waddle, at least uh, with uh, with Jalen Hurts, rather. Too many Jalen's in this year's draft, bro, in the last year's draft. But they realized that they don't, they can't make that mistake, and they went out and decided to fix it. First of all, ESPN has him listed at 170. He's like 165, but I don't care how heavy he is. He balled out in college, and I think he's going to ball in the NFL. He can be a true wide receiver one for Jalen Hurts. Both of them played in Alabama together when uh, Jalen Hurts played at Alabama in 2018, I want to say. I just think overall, you're going to have some baseline of chemistry there. It's going to improve your offense because you need weapons. You're going to lose Zach Ertz too. He's probably going to get traded tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles. Probably going to get, tra- get traded day two, day three uh, in this year's draft. You lost Deshaun Jackson. You lost Alshon Jeffrey. I think this is going to help Joan Rager as well because Defonte Smith profiles as more as that wide receiver one. I think Joan Rager, he's going to be a great wide receiver too. I think overall, this just helps their offense immensely and i think as a trade i think dallas realized that get, oh shit are both our corners that we wanted on the board aren't here we'll trade back and we'll get a third round pick that's going to help our defense i think the pick is in the 80s i want to say 90s so I, that's still a pretty good range i think in the third round because dallas needs to improve their defense they're probably going to go like all defense and maybe draft like an offensive lineman in this year in this year's draft and i think they, they picked up an extra third round pick and more importantly they just said fuck off to the giants and uh, i just gotta say to all cowboys fans uh, i'm I'm gonna give you a fist bump today buddies i I, i'm happy that this happened and i'm ecstatic this was my favorite pick and and it's because i'm biased great is a plus 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 a plus 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 baby and hi rosman you've earned yourself about 24 hours of peace and quiet before your next bad draft pick tomorrow (laughs) Yeah, so for me, this is probably my uh, second favorite uh, pick of the draft. Uh, we'll go into my favorite very, very, very soon. But the, this this was also an A++ pick for me. Uh, the Eagles traded the 12th and 84th pick um, of this year's draft. So this it's a first. And that's not even – I believe, is, is that the, that's the second third that the Eagles – It's their second third. They, have, they, so they still the have rounds. a third-round pick, so they can, they're, still, they're still set, right? So they traded uh, their second third and then uh, the twelfth pick to move up uh, and take uh, Devonte Smith. And Devonte Smith is the perfect guy for this Eagles team. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan. He of course the, I hate the weak the the weaknesses that they're giving him. He doesn't have any weakness, bro. It, it, the weight is the weight's not an issue. I, I hate people saying that this dude's gonna die in the NFL. Doing, he never all, got injured. Like the Jalen Waddle the, got the, injured. The only game <laughs> he got, got in, the only game he got injured was the game where everyone solidified that he was by far the best receiver in football, and that's a national championship game where he sat out in the first half because he, he had, had like two hundred yards and three touchdowns in the first half. In the first half, exactly. He, he, got, injured. Out, <laughs> he got injured. He got injured. Quote unquote. The rest, of the, the rest of the game, like that's the only time. Yeah, he sat out with like. The rest of Alabama's starting roster. <laughs> it's so it's so stupid that that people can actually give this guy any sort of real weakness. Uh, I'm not gonna say he's better than Jamar Chase because I mean I but I, it, dude, like there are people that have Devonte Smith ahead of Jamar Chase. The route running is 
next level, Arib. Uh, it's incredible. His catch radius, uh, everything. I've, I like the confidence he brings too. Mm-hmm. Um, he says he says he's the best uh, wide receiver Alabama's. Ever My had. only problem with him, Amal, is he sounds like a baby, and I was tempted to undraft him after that when he, they were they were interviewing him. But you know, what? I'm willing to live with the. The also, Patrick I'm happy Mahomes that mean uh, voice. I'm happy that that Nick Sirianni did not play rock paper scissors with that dummy. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm so happy that Devontae Smith <laughs> did not play that. Oh my god, that would have been bad. That would have been really bad. Because if, uh, if, 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 if he played if, with him, he might not have gotten drafted, bro. He, that he might probably, have been enough to take probably him would not board. have been drafted. And they would have probably dealt with some BS pick. Well, so that- this is the first time ever in an NFL draft as an Eagles fan. Well, I felt happy, other than the Carson Wentz pick. So. I, I give credit here for Howie Roseman because he perfectly dissected this entire draft board to the T. He knew, he knew clearly that, um, that the giants were going to pick, uh, the giants were going to pick Devontae Smith at 11. He, all right, forget that. Even before that, the, the Eagles had the sixth pick. He knew already then that, uh, Chase and Kyle Pitts were going to be picked in the top six. Uh, before who are their top two targets and, for and sure. those are their top two targets at six so what what's their point in picking a guy like jc horner patrick Sotain at six it's not it's a reach at that point right you wouldn't want to reach at six there and they got their god that they arguably would have picked at six in Devonte smith at 10 and they got and they finessed a free first round pick out of it from uh from I believe it, it Miami. was Miami. So I, I and they only paid what a third round pick to move up to in the nineties. <laughs> it, it's 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 peanuts. It's easy, and I give credit because I think Dallas also won from this trade because at the end of the day they did they got a third round pick and they need serious help on that defense defensive side of the ball, and two for moving down two picks and arguably the guy they would have gotten at twelve would have been the guy that they would have picked at ten. So. It's just free. It's just a free pick. So why not just take that trade, right? And I'm pretty sure that's probably their mindset of them. Like, do we? I don't really want to help this team, but like, we get a free pick, and we were gonna pick this guy at ten. So why not just take the trade? And and I think the Devonte Smith. Oh my gosh, this is and Amal. I this did not think trade. we were gonna come into the draft and see a in division trade, especially this. I don't know if it's ever especially happened. Especially this one. Especially like, this has one. it ever happened? I need to look this up. Uh, we'll Eagles Cowboys trade, podcast. I believe, has happened. No, they traded last year, but has there but, ever been an in division trade in the top ten of an NFL draft? Uh, I don't know. Those uh, things are. I don't are think true. so. I don't. That that would be crazy if, if that is true. But um, I was right on one thing, Arib. Though I did tell you yesterday that Jalen Waddle would be picked ahead of Devontae. So, yeah, and I expected a kind of. And, and I and I and I and I saw that coming. Uh, Jalen Waddle here at ten would also not be a bad pick because you wouldn't. If if Jalen Waddle was picked at eleven by the Giants, the Eagles would have would be would be so screwed. They would know they wouldn't know where to go at twelve because the Cowboys would have probably taken Michael Parsons at ten. Where would the Eagles go at twelve? Right. So it's good mm-hmm. that everything fell out the way that it did. Um, this is a really good pick. I can see Devontae Smith being a potential All Pro uh, wide receiver in this league. Agreed. So yeah, A A plus plus pick. Uh, a plus 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 pick. Yeah. And this one, this next pick. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. So, so when I you had the trade details for this one before. Yeah. So fun story. Um, I've actually Facetimed my older brother Dieter. Uh, right when this trade happened, uh, I said, "Dude, you're not gonna believe this, but the 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 Bears just traded up from 20 20 to um 20 to 11. I, I it's 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 beyond crazy, Arib. Uh. The trade details for this, I believe, are... It's between the New York Giants yeah, yeah, and the it's, Chicago it's, Bears. It's the Giants. So the Giants traded... This is So essentially what happened here is the Giants saw that the Eagles fleeced them and uh, decided to over, over decided to leap them, essentially, and take uh, Devontae Smith, similar to what the Cowboys did with CeeDee Lamb and the Eagles last year. But uh, the Giants traded their 11th pick for the Bears' 22nd, 164 and a future first and a future fourth. So it's the great value for the giants. It's great value for the giants. So this is another great, uh, this is also a great trade for the giants. Uh, They got another future first and the bears are not guaranteed to do well. So they have two potential, very good picks next year. Uh, So that that's already a W in there. And then they get all, they get a fourth and a fifth. So um, like I said, great move in that aspect. 
But oh A plus my plus gosh. pick, bro. Oh A my plus gosh. Okay, plus. so I said A plus 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 for uh the um for the Eagles. I'm gonna give this A plus 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 plus. This is an incredible pick here by uh by the Chicago Bears. They moved up nine spots to no, they moved up eleven spots, my bad. Uh to get to get their man, Justin Fields. And this to move up eleven spots, Arib, and pay that price, it's worth it. I, I I said in the beginning. This gives me shades of Patrick Mahomes and all. I'll be honest. This this dude really, his mobility is there. He's my QB too. I'm surprised he's gonna prove a lot of people wrong. I'm still I I'm still pissed that ten teams actually did not pick, uh, pick Justin Fields. It, he's just simply too good not to be picked this well. But think about this, Arib. We I already told you about this yesterday. Entering into la, entering into the draft. Entering into the offseason after the college football playoffs, Fields was consensus number two. He had a great college football playoff. Yes, he lost to Alabama, but honestly, every team in the league would have lost. Every team in college would have lost to Alabama in probably the same fashion, if not worse. So, I mean, I, I hate that he's getting criticized for that. He played with broken ribs, essentially, and torched Clemson. And that game was just like, that just sealed the deal for me that he's, he's the real deal. And he's also playing, uh, I believe he's playing with some disability as well. I don't remember the disability he has, uh, I, I, but he's it, it, he's going through a lot and he's going to prove a lot of people wrong here. And Chicago's finally got the, he's now I can firmly say this, uh, he's probably already going to be the best quarterback in Bears history. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to say a lot. I have some breaking news, Amal, before we continue on this. So update, according to JPA Football, Bears GM Ryan Pace has confirmed in a press conference that Andy Dalton will still be the 2021 starters, says they have a development plan in place for Justin Fields. Yeah, Dude, it's literally Patrick Mahomes all over yeah, again. Yeah, it's going to be and Patrick this, Mahomes the, the knock on Justin yeah. Fields is that he's a little bit slower when it comes to reading and diagnosing mm-hmm. the field. Guess what? That was the same thing with Patrick Mahomes, except I think Justin Fields might I also be a little don't bit more talented. He's a better runner. I also don't think Andy Dalton's gonna last long as a starter. I'll be honest. Uh, it'll probably last him maybe. Hey, maybe then he can put in BDM, bro. It would be lucky if he lasts the whole year. I'll put it that way. But um, like I said before, this is just they're making up for their Mitch Trubisky blunder. Like I, yeah. this to me, this is what the damn Broncos should have done. It. This is the same. This it completely makes up for the Mitch Trubisky. If Justin Fields turns out to the player that everyone thinks he is, this yeah, this you can immediately remove the Mitch Trubisky problem away. I can I'll, I'll literally delete it from my head. Yes, you you passed on Mahomes. Yes, you passed on Watson. But this guy has ideal. I, I honestly, he has the same potential. So. Uh, and they made up for it. People make mistakes, but mm-hmm. they, they, they made up for this one big time, 22 to 11. That's a, that's a jump. Uh, incredible. A plus 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 pick. And just before we hop on from this, the giants, they get a future first round pick. Like you said, a fourth and a fifth, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say it's good value for them. Cause if Daniel Jones doesn't work out and we're going to talk about Daniel Jones later on in this podcast, then you have ammunition to trade up later on and draft a replacement quarterback. So overall, I like this from both sides, and I love it. A plus 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 plus. Do you think A Rob A Rob is now happy? Oh, A Rob is probably going to sign a long term deal tomorrow. So. Now, I think I think now I think now uh, the Bears better get get the phone ready on a- mm-hmm. uh, Allen Robinson. Yeah, I agree. With the twelfth overall pick that was traded from Philadelphia, the Dallas Cowboys select Michael Parsons, linebacker out of Penn State. I'll give this a B plus a all. Purely because I was a bit lower on Micah Parsons than other people. He was my 16th ranked player. And I really believe they should have gone Rashawn Slater here because Tyron Smith, their longtime left tackle, has been injured. And if Tyron Smith starts games, then just move Rashawn Slater to guard. And I think Rashawn Slater, for me, was a sure thing. I think he's going to shore up the offensive line and you're going to open up the holes for Zeke that weren't there last year, but that had been there throughout his entire career. You're going to help your quarterback who literally got his ankle snapped on national television by keeping him upright. I think Rashawn Slater should have been the pick here. And I understand going Micah Parsons because Lane Vander Esch, their linebacker who they drafted a couple years ago, has been injured. And they just had Sean Lee, their longtime linebacker, retire. Jalen Smith, another longtime linebacker. Not long time. He's like three not years into his time, career, four years. Yeah. But he, he's also not, kind of not lived up to the hype recently. Micah Parsons is a great athlete. This guy, six foot three, 246. He runs, he might run faster than like 
a four four. I think he runs a four four. Dude, this guy on the field, his explosiveness. He ran a four three his, nine. In the, in the yeah, line. his explosiveness, his range, his tackling is all there. I'm gonna give it a B plus just because I think Rashawn Slater to me was more of a sure thing. I think Micah Parsons, this to me was going for a high upside pick. And I think at some level, he is a project player almost. Uh, like not necessarily a project project player, but just like a project player. Like he needs a lot of things to develop in order for him to become a truly elite NFL linebacker. He was a great college linebacker, but in order to be an, a great NFL linebacker, I think he has things to work on versus where I think Rashawn Slater filled arguably a bigger hole maybe. And I think he was a more sure thing, still a great pick for them. And again, they got a third round pick to help sure that defense up or maybe even draft an offensive lineman in the third round from the Eagles in their trade. So I, I like the player. I just don't like the position, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, Michael Parsons for me, he's my favorite player in the draft. I've said this many times. Uh, Michael Parsons is my guy. Uh, I'm, I'm biased obviously, because I'm a Penn state uh, student, but the dude's a beast. I'm going to give it an A minus because I think the same way, uh, like you said, Rashawn Slater was probably a better pick mm-hmm. here. Uh, but I think it was written in the stars completely uh, that this would be the pick. They Sean Lee retired yesterday, and the former Penn State linebacker, Sean Lee, and now you're replacing it with another Penn State linebacker, Michael Parsons. And Michael Parsons' family are Cowboys fans. I mean, it's meant Life to is be. a simulation, my it, guy. It, it's completely meant to be. They traded down two picks, and they got the job done at Michael Parsons here. So uh, – but I think he does have some things. He, like you said, he's kind of a raw, raw uh, linebacker here. He didn't play a linebacker for long, actually. So I believe only two seasons he's played linebacker. And coverage is obviously going to be the weakness that he has. But that edge presence he brings, Arib, he'd be edge one by far if he played edge. <laughs> but yeah, if he developed his edge, he could be really good. Yeah, he could be. He'd be. He's insane. a good blitzing linebacker right now. I think just at everything else, like playing linebacker, dissecting things. He has a lot of work to do. Yeah, I, I like the player. Again, you're higher on him than I am, which is why you have an A-. minus. I have a B plus. But again, I can't really complain that much. Now here, uh, A++. Plus, plus, uh, it's just an A, an a plus pick for me. Rashawn Slater plus, being drafted yeah. 13 overall for the LA Chargers. They needed offensive line help. They drafted this, they the second it. best offensive yeah. lineman. Yeah, in, there's in nothing draft. really to talk about. We can about. move on. Oh, yeah, now we have a trade here. At the 14th overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings traded down with the Jets, and they this selected was, Elijah Vera Tucker yeah, from this USC. Was, uh, the Dude. trade was, I believe, so mm-hmm. they traded uh, – the Jets traded up, right? So the Jets traded the 23rd pick, the 66th pick, and the 86th pick. So they traded a lot, essentially, Arif. They traded – uh, they traded a first and they traded two thirds, right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a beginning of the, the early third and a late third. So I, I, I'm interested uh, to see what you think about that. Yeah. I think among what they realized, and it's the same thing with the Eagles. They realized their biggest flaw with Carson Wentz wasn't necessarily Carson Wentz. It was the fact that they failed to put good offensive players around him. And I think the it Jets helps. realized this. It and it, 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 same thing with Zach Wilson. The Jets had Sam Darnold, who was literally drafted three years ago. I don't know if it was three years ago today, but it was definitely three years ago, uh, almost to the, the day, where they drafted Sam Darnold, a quarterback out of USC, same school as Elijah Vera Tucker, actually. Right. And they never had a great offensive line around him. And they never had great run. They tried to get good running backs around him. Le'Veon Bell, that didn't work because Le'Veon Bell was washed. They tried to get good wide receivers, kind of, not really. I mean, I guess they give Robbie Anderson some more starting time. And that was their investment in him. And they realized that didn't work. And I think they wanted to reset their quarterback clock. And they did that by drafting Zach Wilson. And then this new coaching staff with, I guess, an older GM and Joe Douglas, they realized that, we can't do the same mistakes. You can't still, you know, it's just like you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting it to be different. And it's just not going to be different at all. And they realize that they need to go out and improve this offensive line. Cause guess what? You're going to draft a running back in the second or third round, maybe fourth round, whatever it might be. You're going to get a better running back because you're going to have a potential all pro guard next to an all pro tackle already in Mackay Becton. 
I think you're, you're that right. I think it's the left side of the offensive line. It's going to be really, really nice. You're going to protect Zach Wilson, who has had shoulder injuries. You're going to open up the run game. And I think overall, you're just improving your offensive massively. They realized they had holes to fill. They realized you can't just you know, do the same thing over and over again, expect different results. That's literally the definition of insanity. Correct. And they went out and they, they yeah, they might've traded a little bit too much, three thirds, but I think they realized they need to fix the hole and they can't repeat the same thing. And they, I, I've got to give them props. I'd give this an A. Yeah. I'm going to give this an A as well. I think uh, they, they did slightly overpaid. That's why I, I didn't give it an A plus, but this fills a hole at the end of the day and they need mm-hmm. to protect Zach Wilson. I think that was the problem when uh, you dealt with Sam Darnold. Uh, and uh, they're finally learning from the mistakes with the new management. Uh, it's good to see that. With the 15th overall pick, the New England Patriots Great select Mac pick. Jones. I'm going to give this an A minus purely because I'm not as high on Mac Jones as other people. But uh, I've got to say, Mac Jones, he fell he literally. He fell Tom, 15, first but... of all, he fell right, and I was in a call with Patriots fans as they're happening when Justin Fields got drafted. When the Bears traded up, they were depressed. And then Mac Jones kept falling and falling and falling. And then at 15, they were ecstatic that he was the pick. They needed a quarterback. And this guy, he looks like Tom Brady. He walks like Tom Brady. He has the same arm as Tom Brady, arguably. I'm not saying he's going to be Tom Brady, but he's that standard Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels quarterback. I guess they're not going to really venture out that much farther than a washed up Cam Newton. Uh, I think Cam backwards is Mac. That is true. I don't know who's going to be the starter week one. I don't think it matters. Mac Jones, for me, he's a very high floor player. And I think that's all you need if you build a good roster. Not a super high ceiling. Not a super high ceiling, but I think that's all you need to win a Super Bowl is having a high floor type player who's not going to make a lot of mistakes and is going to execute the offense. And I think they improved the offense mightily in this free agency class and they just let the, the draft fall to them Lamar. and I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it an a minus purely because I think, you know, I'm going to give it an a bro. They, I, I was literally asking my friend, these friends, my, my Patriots friends, like what would they do other than Mac Jones? They couldn't name anything. So no, I'm going to no, give this, it an a because no, Mac it, Jones is the only pick. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm giving it an a plus. They, they, it's the only pick they had on the board and that made mm-hmm. any logical sense. Uh, I'm not going to give it an a plus plus, but it's an a plus because they, they were going to trade up for Mac Jones, Arib. So the fact that he fell to 15 and we thought about him going to three, just remember that Arib. We thought about him going to three and just so uh, it makes us feel a little bit happy. Two out of our three mock drafts did have Mac Jones going to 15. So Thank, thank God. Thank God we got we got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> With the 16th overall pick, the Arizona Cardinals like Zayvon Collins, the linebacker out of Tulsa. I love the player. And I, I don't really know my opinion on this on law. I guess their defense needed some help. I think they could have gone offensive line here and help keep up. Uh, his, keep fit up was, his fit's concerning, though. I think that's my thing. Arid. I don't, I don't know how they're going to use him. Are they, they going to use him as a pass rusher? Because I don't think he's a... An they, edge they, drafted, rusher. they drafted Isaiah Simmons literally last year. So, uh, okay, the thing is, Isaiah, Col- uh, Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins are definitely two different linebackers. 100%. 100%. 100%. Zayvon Collins, they have him listed at 259. He weighed at 270, I think, at his pro day. This guy is massive, runs like someone that big should not run. Like, he's a LeBron type freak athlete. But here's the thing they also have Jordan Hicks, right? That's they have Jordan Hicks, right? I'm looking at their line. Sean Reddick is there. Hashan Reddick. He actually left. He left for free yeah, he agency. He left now. Yeah, okay. yeah. He's in so they're starting linebackers, Jordan Hicks, Isaiah Simmons, Zayvon Collins. You know, I get it to some extent, right? I think they realized in the NFC West, they have a ton of explosive offenses and going defense. You have an Isaiah Simmons who can match up with, you know, a Travis Kelsey with a Russell Wilson, keeping those guys in the pocket. I, I understand that Zayvon Collins gives you another pass a pass coverage linebacker who is extremely big and has some, a really high ceiling. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to grade this pick. I'm going to give it an undetermined grade, but just because I want to see how Vance Joseph uses him. And uh, like, if they're using him as an edge rusher, I'm going to give it an F if they're using him as a true traditional linebacker. And I believe they play a three, four. So they should use him as a normal linebacker, right? With Isaiah Simmons and with Jordan Hex. If they use him in that role, I think he can excel. I'm also going to give this an un, like an ungraded pick just because I want to see them go offensive line or offensive weapons later on. I'm all, 
I get they got Rodney Hudson right it, it, from the the Raiders uh, through a trade, but DJ Humphreys is their starting tackle, left tackle. Kevin Beecham is their starting right tackle. I think they need to go offensive line in order for me to be really happy about this pick. Zayvon Collins for me, I like the player. I, I just don't know how he's gonna fit, so I'm gonna give it a question mark. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a C plus. I'll get a B minus. I'll get a B minus. Um. The reason I'm gonna give it that is the fit is I'm not I'm not sure if you can go multiple I don't I'm not sure what he, they can do. Also, there were better there were bigger needs. I thought cornerback was a need for them. They could have taken. I agree. Side. Uh, that that was a huge need actually. Patrick Peterson's there. Uh, Robert Alford's probably gonna get cut too. Um, Jonathan Joseph, Dre Kirkpatrick. Yeah, I mean those guys are all free agents, right? So, uh. And then they, they, Ronald Darby left, right? So, yeah, I, the cornerback was a huge need for them. So Patrick I, Peterson, I, not Ronald Darby, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Patrick know. Peterson, uh, yeah, of course. That's a huge one. Um, yeah, so – I'm this give, is just yeah. a very interesting pick. I'm not, a, I'm not like, I don't I like think the Zayn range Collins, was out of the, I, I, yeah, I like Zayvon Collins. I don't think they overreached on him or anything. Like they, if they wanted to pick him, I think this is a, a like 16 to like 24 was a good range for him. Yeah. It's not like Lex pick. Again, it's just, a, it's just, a, yeah, it's just a fit for me, but yeah. Talking about the next pick with the 17th overall pick, the oh Las gosh. Vegas Raiders oh selected my gosh. Alex Leatherwood oh my. out of Alabama. Okay. And to preface oh this, God. right. I like Alex Leatherwood a more. I like him as a tackle. I think he's a really high ceiling player. I think potentially he's an athletic specimen. I think he tested as one of the best uh, athletic scores ever from a tackle, right? Correct. Good run, a good run blocker. So I guess if you really want to hope and open up holes with Josh Jacobs, you can do that. The Raiders butchered their offensive line. So they got a new tackle, right? The thing is at this time, they had Christian Darius on the board, who I have as my tackle for out of Virginia Tech. They have Tevin Jenkins, who still hasn't been picked. He's one of the unpicked players out of Oklahoma State. He's my offensive tackle three. My offensive tackle four, uh, five was... Eichenberg? Eichenberg. Then Rudun's out of six. Cosme at seven. I think I might... I had Jalen Mayfield at eight. And then I have Alex Leatherwood as my ninth tackle. And if you look at the first round picks for Mike Mayock and John Gruden, it's like... They're you know, all last year, stupid. last year, they're, they're just stupid reaches. Hot. Like, I think they don't understand that they have Rogues a trade a, function. Like, Rogues they, was a reach, too. Yeah, they, they've reached they have they had the ability to, yeah. to trade down. Like, if you really like, like Leatherwood to me, he's a great pick in the second round, not in the great top, pick. not great in the top pick. 20. Right? I just. And again, I don't want to knock the kid. I'm going to give this a C minus them all. I think you feel the, I feel the need. I just think they need to learn how to like trade, bro. Like, do you not know how to tr- like use, like, I'm sure they have phones like John Gruden and Mike Mayock can't be like that old where they don't have like a functioning smartphone where, you know what we have, I don't know. We have like the Browns number on the line. The Browns want to trade up for like Greg Newsom. I, they, they had that function, bro. Like, I, I, it's just like, it's not like something they need to like learn unless maybe, I don't know. Maybe they're just like, 80 years old in their, their heads and they don't know how to use phones or some shit, but it just makes no sense to me. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I hated this pick. I, I, I hated this pick with a passion and everyone hated this pick again. It's a and great, by the way, uh, my, my man, position. One of my, my, one of my favorite basketball players, Damian Lillard uh, was asked this question. What do you think about the Raiders pick? No comment. Uh, I don't think about <laughs> it at all. Uh, I think that's, that's my, that's the, my reports I would take if I was Raider nation. Our good friend Tej, an, an honorary member of Raiders Nation, had was pretty upset at this pick too. <laughs> but yeah, this, this pick made no sense. Uh, I'm, I'm giving it an F. What did you get? What did you give again? The uh, I'll give it a D plus. Actually, I, I think I like the position of all. I don't like the player at this spot. What did you give the Sertan pick again? An F minus minus. Yeah. I'll give it an F minus minus minus. I can't give it. I can't give it more than the Broncos. Broncos, I think, still made the worst pick in the first round. Uh, because- I still have one pick worse than that. We'll we'll keep going. Don't mm-hmm. worry about. Oh, it. I do too. Don't worry. Eighteen yeah. uh, with the 18th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins picked Jalen Phillips out of Miami. This was I'm a giving this pick. a plus, bro. One hundred percent. I know I've given a lot of A pluses. It's because all these players are damn good. 
Uh, even Alex Leatherwood, he's good, but uh, it's a reach. I think Jalen Phillips, they needed edge rush help, bro. They needed it. And I think you can, they, like, they and needed it so Watson. badly. And they got the best edge rusher yeah, at that, 18. They didn't have to trade up for him. They can pair him up with that other, that already good defense. I think, I just think what they needed, they needed edge rusher. They needed offensive line. They needed a wide receiver. They came out of the first round with two of those needs filled. And they picked Jalen Phillips, who I think is the best pass rusher, pure pass rusher in this year's class already. They picked him at 18. Phenomenal value, letting the draft play out to them. I've got to give the Dolphins a round of applause. And, bro, the Dolphins, the, the thing is, they're almost a playoff team, man. They're picking at 18. They were literally the last team eliminated from the playoffs. And they needed they, they needed no they, – they, they literally needed Tua to improve a little bit, and they would have made the playoffs last season. On top of that, they got an explosive weapon in Jalen Waddle. They got a really, I think, at the very least, a high-floor pass rusher in Jalen Phillips. Brian Flores should be ecstatic. And the, the Dolphins are just teaching teams how to build great rosters. Yeah, so, uh, Arif, good news for you. You actually mocked this yesterday. Uh, I want to I give did. you props for that. Uh, I actually agreed with the pick, too. So, uh, yeah, great job. Uh, I gave this an A. Uh, only reason I'm not giving it an A plus is, I, oh, as much as I love Jalen Phillips, the injury history is the only thing that's holding yeah, me back. Yeah, fair him. enough. And I think that's the only reason it's not an A plus because I think if the injury history was not there for him, he probably would have gone in the top 15, top 10, top 10, I forget top 15, top 10. Uh, that's the only thing that was holding him back. Uh, and that's the only reason he's not even my edge one. I think the injury issues are, are, are it's still an issue. Um, but yeah, uh, first edge off the board, I'm not super surprised. It was between him and Quiddy Pay. Uh, and those two were clear, mm-hmm. clear clearly number uh the number one and number two yep. defensive edge uh yeah. let's try we, to speed this up a little bit of more <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah we'll yeah. be recording this at 1 41 a.m on what is it friday, friday. the day after the draft with Jimmy the 19th over pick the, uh, the washington football team select jameen davis out of alabama, uh, not alabama out of kentucky it's getting late now i'm gonna give this the thing is, I like Jeremiah Wissakoromoma more than I liked Jameen Davis, the linebacker out of Notre Dame. I think he filled more that the hole. I think he plays a lot of different positions. That being said, I guess linebacker was a pretty big need for them. So I can't really knock it. I'm going to give it a B plus. I think they fill the position of need, just not with the player I wanted. And Jameen Davis, bro, this guy's long, athletic. His athletic testing was off the, the off the charts. He's, he's, I think, someone who can be a great run defender, pretty high level pass coverage player. And I think he, he, he to me, was supposed to be the Darius Leonard of this class, someone who was going to fall. And then they'd be a great pick in the second round where you're like, damn, this guy's like a legitimate Pro Bowl caliber linebacker. And his athletic testing in his pro day just shot him up, I guess, to where he was linebacker three uh, behind only Micah Parsons and Zayvon Collins. So, yeah, I, I don't really have a problem with the pick. I was a bit shocked by it, but I think I like him as a good – as a linebacker. I think he's more of a – he's definitely more of not a middle linebacker. He's more of an off-ball linebacker like definitely. Will, Sam. But I like him. I, I like the player, and I like the position. I was just a little bit shocked. And I'm knocking just purely because I think JOK would have been the better pick here for me personally. But hey, I mean, they feel their need. Their defense is going to be elite now, even more. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to give it an A. Uh, I'm high on Jameen Davis. I think that's my main reason between you, me, and you. I'm higher on him than JOK. And he's probably right underneath Parsons for me. Uh, it's his athleticism. He reminds me a lot of Darius Leonard, honestly, uh, when I see him play. Uh, he six four frame two thirty four, the four he I, I, he ran a four three seven I believe in the combine I, the, crazy. Uh, yeah, he's a freak athlete who yeah. I think has a better idea of how to play linebacker than Micah Parsons. So he's Definitely, not that yeah. he's not as yeah. fast as Micah. But Parsons, even him, the but... the weaknesses he is also only one year. He's still yeah. not super mm-hmm. experienced uh, in that. Uh, but. I think that's yeah, the risk. I take. love the pick, bro, and I love the player. Yeah. Kadarius now, is Tony. Dude, the 20th overall pick, the New York Giants select like Kadarius Tony out of Florida, the wide receiver. They're going to give this a high B. I'm going to give it a. I'm going to give it a B. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a B. Uh, I think my thing with Kadarius Tony here, uh, it, 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 it was just the fact that. 
he, he's great. Um, the, the 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 Giants just have so many different receivers, man. That's my thing. They have yeah. yeah they, they like they have Darius. Sl- People forgot about Darius Slade. Darius Slade's a monster. Sterling Shepard, who's Sterling they have like a long term deal. So um, then they have Kenny Galladay. Just picked up Kenny Galladay, and and now the, and then they have Evan Ingram, and now they just picked up Kadarius Tony. And there's so many different wide receivers. Kadarius Tony isn't a wide receiver one by mm-hmm. any means, but it's just yeah, he's like, definitely a wide receiver two for me. And he in this situation, he probably could even be three, uh, because Darius. Slayton's- he's not going to be an all. He's not going to be an outside wide receiver, Moss. It's pretty clearly that, that yeah. that's what's going to happen. But I think we've seen a common theme with the New York Giants. It's over and over and over again this offseason. And it's, you know what, Daniel Jones, the ball is in your court, buddy. That's it's been zero. there. This is, it's your prove it year. Dude, he has negative excuses at this point, not even zero. I, I think they went out, signed Kenny Galladay. They went out, improved. I think I think they improved the offensive line. Maybe I'm blanking out. It's almost 2 a.m. Kadarius Tony, guess what, slot wide receiver. And I think Kadarius Tony is going to take pressure They just pressure threw off. him in just for Daniel Jones, I guarantee. Yeah, and I'm all, he's going to play the stop. He's going to take handoffs. They're going to give him a ton of screens. He's going to take pressure off of Daniel Jones and off of Saquon Barkley. I think they just need to improve their offensive line a little bit more, and I think they're good to go. I'm going to give this a B-plus just because I think – I think their defense definitely could have been fixed more, but at the same time, their offense was, I think, the bigger hole last season. I think there are better players on the board. I had Kadarius Tony ranked as my 36th player on the board. So, like, again, it's like mid second. So, I think I only had like 18 first round players. So, I'm fine with like a second round player going this high. But people uh, have just, the first round, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think really my takeaway from this is I'm not going to even grade the pick. It's just. Daniel Jones, you can't screw up, buddy. Like yeah, that's, this is this is Daniel Jones prove it year. This he has no excuses. Uh mm-hmm. if he can't make it work. If they lose games because of defense, fair enough. If they lose games because he gets sacked, that's even also fair enough. But I I need to see pure production out of him. And and if he's not doing that, uh there's serious problems, I think. Mm-hmm. And and hey, Amal, they got a first round pick because they traded down here. With Chicago, Chicago drafted Justin Fields. So they could have honestly drafted Justin Fields here. And I would have been, if I'm a Giants fan, I'm ecstatic with that pick in all honesty, right? But they decided, you know what, Daniel Jones, we're going to show some faith in you. We're going to draft a wide receiver. We're going to get an extra first round pick. So if you screw up, buddy, then guess what? Next year, you're gone. We're trading up for another quarterback. Maybe, I don't know, Spencer Rattler, whoever's there next year, we'll know next year, a year from now. But I like this. I like this whole situation for the Giants as a whole. Yeah. Um. Now, twenty first overall pick, the Indianapolis Colts selected Brandon Quiddy Graham two point oh. Quiddy Pay. Oh, I called this Michigan. pick as well. Yep. I Go it. for it, man. Colts yeah, fan. Talk uh, about uh, it. Resident I, Colts I'm fan. very happy with this pick. Uh. I. I mean, for me, he was my edge one. The drive with him, this, his story, Arib. I don't know if you saw the video that was posted by NFL yesterday regarding Quiddy, Quiddy Pay. Oh my gosh, man. He was a son of a refugee from and is from Liberia. Uh, and his, his drive is, I, I don't know, Reap, if you've seen his, co- his uh, three cone drill, it's probably the best three cone I've ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh. Uh, out of this, he world. is literally Brandon Graham 2.0. Mall. He literally lined in Michigan, he lined up in the inside too, like Brandon Graham does on pass. He rushing probably downs. runs sub four six too. So I think he, he's. He, He's a monster. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, he's a highly athletic guy who is short, so he not automatically has yeah, that it, natural like, pad level. I just, I, it's, just, it's just so scary. You got DeForest Buckner that can collapse the pocket, and then Quiddy Pay on the edge. Oh my gosh, that that's that's it's it's a nightmare waiting to happen. And I'd like uh, to see them go offensive tackle. On the I think I think he it, okay. So I think Jalen Phillips, if uh, he's fully healthy, I actually do believe he'll be the best uh, edge in this class because his, his athleticism is even on another a completely other level. But Quiddy Pay, uh, I think he's probably more safer, of course, than Jalen Phillips. So that's why he's my edge one. And I think his just his his, uh, his work ethic is just uh, next to none. So mm-hmm. um, I'm giving this an A plus plus pick. So <laughs> it's like everyone gets an A plus and we're handing out participation trophies with the 22nd overall pick. What'd you pick, give it? I give it an A. Yeah. With the 22nd overall pick, the Tennessee Titans saw Caleb Farley cornerback out of Virginia. Tech. Risky and pick. Caleb Farley, he fell, man. I, and I thought, I honestly thought, I texted this to a couple people right before this pick. I thought Caleb Farley might've fallen 
out of the first round entirely due to his back injury, due to him. 23 is not falling that bad, though. I mean, he was mocked like in the top 10 early on. We mocked him in the top 10, I think. In our first like, mock. The Broncos when they didn't sign Kendall Fuller. Um, I'm just thinking, I'm looking at their roster, right? They have Caleb Farley, I'm, I'm giving Janoris this, Jenkins. I'm giving this a C plus because of the risk. And they could have honestly probably gotten in round two. Yeah, I, th- I think I would have liked Greg Newsom more here. I'm not. I'm going to give them a. And B. I love. I love Caleb Farley too. Mm-hmm. So I, it's not even that. It's just like the fact that it it is. It's very. It's really risky here, and it's back to back risky picks. They picked these this bum Isaiah Wilson last year. So uh, it's another risky pick, mm-hmm. right? So see, I wanted them to go edge right early on in the off season, and they signed Bud Dupree from the Steelers. So I'm like that edge yeah. is that that need is a little bit less necessary. Aziz Ojolari would have been my pick here. Maybe like a Joe Tryon, someone like that. Newsom would have been my pick. Uh, Newsom would have been a good pick here as well. I'll give it a B plus. I think you needed first of all, we knew this when we talked about the Tennessee Titans last season. The reason they weren't a legitimate Super Bowl contender for me is because their pass defense was absolute garbage. They couldn't stop me if we were playing backyard football. Like it could be me throwing to like Booger McFarlane and we go off for like a hundred yard touchdowns every single fucking play. And I, I just don't think. They realize they can't do that. So Caleb Farley, I like the position. I like the player. I think there is risk in built with it. So I give it a B plus, but it is what it is. He's a high ceiling player, uh, extremely high ceiling. He's a bit over aggressive at times, but his recovery speed is nuts. His fluidity is nuts. I just love everything about him. I just think he is a bit risky just because again, he was already a, bu- a boomer bust player and his deadlift injury is making him a little bit more boomer bust. So yeah, um, we can move on. Twenty uh, third overall pick, the Vikings traded back finesse. with the Jets. Uh, with the Jets, and dude, this for me finesse. might be the biggest big brain play. They, the Vikings drafted Christian Dorsaw, tackle out of Virginia Tech. He was my tackle three slash four, tied with Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Uh, again, another they one should have taken him at fourteen. And they up. needed offensive line to help them. Well, I mean, they've needed offensive line help for like forever. It seems even since even before they like signed Kirk Cousins. I feel like they just always need an offensive line and they were supposed to get him at 14 ended up falling to 23, just biggest finesse. A, I give it an A plus for me uh, just because I, I think they needed to, like they needed to improve their running game uh, and they need to improve their pass protection. They need to get a better run game essentially. Cause I think they've lost some tackles if I remember correctly. And I think they got that all. And on top of that, they got, what did they get an extra first round pick, right? For no, a couple extra thirds, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you pair him with Brian O'Neill and uh, Ezra Cleveland, Garrett uh, Garrett Bradbury. Overall, I think that offensive line could be good, and I, I think uh, Dalvin Cook is going to be an even bigger monster next year. Now, dude, oh, this God. pick, these both 20- these picks. we can talk both at the same time. Oh my gosh, both. Okay, these- the twenty fourth overall pick, the Pacers Steelers oh, drafted God. Najee Harris, the running back out of Alabama. I'm giving this an F, bro, and not because I love I love Najee Harris. I think Najee Harris here to Steelers is a great fit, right? The problem is, first of all, you're paying this guy round one money as a running back. I'm, my running back philosophy is pump and dump, bro. Like, or I don't know. That unless, a little unless, bit unless sexual, you're bro. running back Saquon Barkley <laughs> caliber or Ezekiel Elliott caliber off the jump, these guys should not be getting first round. That type and of dude, Najee Harris, dude, I have him ranked as my... He's, I have him ranked as, he's, he's my 18th ranked player, right? It's just Which that is, positional value running back. Exactly. We've talked about it on our show. Other people were talking about on their show. Don't draft a running back. And That's if you look at the shot. damn Steelers roster, bro, the Steelers roster, they had so O-line. many times. It they, 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 had, they had players retiring. They had people just leaving uh, in free agency. They had holes at interior and at tackle. And they went and filled a hole that wasn't there. I'm, well, like, no, I'm not even joking, bro. If we had a good offensive line, I think if I had a good offensive line, I bet you I could I could get five yards in the NFL and every carry. But Najee Harris, yeah, he's a great running back. Guess what? He's a patient running back. Literally Le'Veon Bell 2.0. What did Le- what made Le'Veon Bell so, so successful? He's a great player after the catch. Great, uh, great player running the ball, but he was patient and he let his offensive line set blocks. And Najee Harris, to me, he's Le'Veon Bell 2.0 in that patient style. I don't think there's been another patient running back ever since Le'Veon Bell. And I think Najee Harris is the one who fits that role the most. 
but you don't have a damn running game. You don't have a damn offensive line exactly. for him to be patient oh behind. Yeah. F minus A plus player F minus for the need positional value. I, and I'm th- gonna give it a D minus. I'll, I'll give it a D minus because the the pick you should never honestly unless the the, the running backs like elite of the elite of the elite like like i said before todd Gurley was up there christian mccaffrey ezekiel elliott saquon barkley honestly those caliber running backs i'm okay with even when clyde edwards elair was picked last year i wasn't even like super high on that but mahomes wanted him so i'm like whatever all right i gave it a decent grade this pick actually made no sense this pick made no it, it sure it, the, 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 they need a running back, but honestly, it's the last of their needs. Uh, all Steelers fans, for some reason, wanted this pick because uh, of the name, of course, Najee Harris. You think of Najee Harris, he's the best running back in football and college football. Let's have him, he's going to be the savior of our franchise. It's whatever. If Steelers fans are happy, it's whatever. He wasn't but, even best player available, Ma. I think uh, Tevin uh, Jenkins, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma State, who I've mentioned multiple times, he was BPA and. He filled the need. Yeah, running back was a need too. But like, are you living in like the 1960s? Like, is Jim Brown going to come out and be like, running back okay, is the way yeah. to run your yeah, offense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we talked about this pick being mm-hmm. bad. Oh, the my 25th God. overall pick, bro. 25th this overall is, pick. Right, this is my worst pick of the draft. This is by far my worst pick of the draft. I don't, I, I, and, and this is a reason play. why. Okay, so. With the 25th overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Travis Etienne running back out of Clemson. And Urban Meyer, who was his first time being a head coach in the NFL after being a long time, great college head coach. He says that uh, even though he has James Robinson, right? He says that he wants to go best player available according to Ian Rappaport. I think the actual tweet is the Jaguars, despite having a top young running back in James Robinson, take Clemson running back Travis Etienne. Urban Meyer t- told me he'd take the best player available no matter what he does and he reunites Trevor Lawrence and his college teammates. So yeah, you know what? Chemistry wise, great pick, right? But again, I'm same sure thing with Najee Harris, right? Running backs value. And also the thing that makes this pick unexcusable for me. Yeah, Travis Etienne was best player available, right? James but Robinson. this this is what this is literally what Urban Meyer said, right? He says he says he sees James Robinson and Carlos Hyde, who they signed in free agency, as a one-two punch, and ECN is a third down back. And the thing with me, bro, is you already had one good running back, Carlos Hyde. I think maybe not a good, <laughs> not a great running back, but he's a decent to good running back, right? You you the Jaguars, you had the worst record in all of football, my guy. You have so many holes to fill. Defense, Saxonville's defense. I mean, you literally traded away your entire defense for first round picks. Like you, I'm sure you could have drafted someone else on the defensive side or drafted an offensive lineman to keep. They got this Trevor from Lawrence the Rams, up. exactly. They got this for the Ramsey trade. You're trying to say Ramsey's worth ETN? Or are, are you serious now? Come on now. And man. I don't care how good ETN is. Good, how ETN is. It's just. It makes no sense for me from positional value for the fact that you needed, yeah, you could have gone best player available, but go best player available anywhere else except running back except in the first round. Any, actually, I think anywhere except running back would have like, been a How many pick. snaps do you think ETN's going to They could have play? even picked a like, backup quarterback and it may have been a better pick. Dude, ETN, it really, it ETN make- and maybe, let's just say ETN plays like half the snaps, right? If you drafted a corner, they play like what, 80% of the snaps, 90% of the snaps. You draft an offensive tackle, a barring injury, they play a hundred percent of snaps. Like you want that we'll snap, high snap count, high well, impact player. I, I just don't see it. this is definitely the worst pick for me in the first round. And again, I love the player, player a a a level player. I just don't think he fits with what you they had there. And James mind. Robinson was a, a thousand yard from scrimmage guy last season. I, I just don't understand it. He now, was also with, both of our running back threes as well. Uh, that's another thing to know. So, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. It was just 1A, it, 1B, it, 1C it, with him and Javante oh, Williams. But, oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is – uh, we gave – yeah, I'm going to give F minus, 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 four minus. These grades are so creative, bro. Yeah. Uh, are you going to get – I'm assuming you're giving the same grade? I'm going to give it below that, man. I think – This is this or, is the worst pick. So, you gave you gave uh, DD. Is this DDD? Triple D? Sure. All right. <laughs> this band, um, uh, no, I, I don't even know, bro. I can't come up with a good analysis or analogy here. Uh, acronym. Okay. With the 26th overall pick, the Cleveland Browns, like Greg Mason, the second out of cornerback, cornerback out of Northwestern. 
Um, I'm yeah, a I'm giving it an A minus, Amal, and I'm going to give it an A minus just because I think they could have gone linebacker. I think that would have been a bigger hole they could have filled. I also think they could have gone did, safe. But the, here's the thing. They so, added Anthony Walker Jr. from Indy, and that's and I'm high on him, so that's why I didn't. Okay, fair enough. You you know more about that. I'm giving it an A minus. Um, why am I giving it an A minus? Oh, yeah, I'm giving it an A, period, just because – they're, again, the, the reason, the same reason, and we saw two teams last season, Amal, we're talking about the Tennessee Titans and the Cleveland Browns. Both of them were not legitimate Super Bowl contenders. And we both knew why, and everyone knew why. It's because they couldn't stop, again, they couldn't stop me or you from scoring touchdowns on them. Like these guys were bona fide scrubs and they couldn't do crap when it came to defending anybody. I'm thinking Cleveland like allowed like 50,000 points every game. Same thing with Tennessee. Tennessee drafted a corner and then guess what? Cleveland drafts a corner and they draft the safer corner. who I think is also very versatile. Uh, Greg Newsom for me, if I remember correctly from my film study, again, it's late. He's an off man corner plays pretty well. Uh, his fluidity is really nice. Has good length against six foot one ninety two. has the ideal size. His tackling, I th- his tackling was, I'd say it left some for de- something to be desired, but again, he's a cornerback. They have she miles. Garrett. The they have miles Garrett to stop the damn run. Greg Newsom is there to stop the pass. Uh, I think I would have personally, if I was the Titans, I would have picked Greg Newsom first because I think he's a safer player with the injury history. And I, I think Greg Newsom, similar to Caleb Farley, I don't know if he has as high of a ceiling because I don't know if he has the same recovery speed. But, dude, this guy doesn't get burned deep. And I think you that's what you needed if you're the Browns, not being burned deep. So I think going cornerback here, uh, I love him. I love everything he, Greg Newsom gives you, his fluidity, his length, all that. He has everything you need to be a top corner in this year a league. And Parama Dunzo Award, I guess Greedy Williams, a former LSU pick, gets benched now, but to hell with it. Who cares? I think Greg Newsom was far better of a prospect than Greedy Williams. And yeah, I, I think I like this on. for the Browns. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. Uh, we move on. Baltimore Ravens, they selected with their 27th pick. Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota. Easy I like pick. This, I like this pick. This was an easy pick. Um, I'm going to give it This is the pick that everyone knew would happen on all too. Agreed. Like, yeah. Yeah. If um, I thought Bateman, if Bateman didn't go earlier, this was the pick everyone expected. They've yeah. been mocked a wide receiver ever since they drafted Lamar Jackson. Ever since Steve Smith retired, like they've been that's mocked the word, yeah. A yeah. wide receiver. And Rashad Bateman, six foot one ninety. He definitely he projects as a true wide receiver one. And they needed one uh, outside of Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown's that deep threat. Now Rashad Bateman gives you a Keenan Allen type wide receiver. Love it for them. They need, they need pass catching. Now Peyton Turner, 28th overall pick Peyton Turner was drafted by the New Orleans Saints. They already have Peyton Turner on the roster. His name's Cameron Jordan and Cameron Jordan didn't start off being Cameron Jordan. Cameron Jordan built himself up into being Cameron Jordan. And I think Peyton Turner can build himself up to being Cameron Jordan 2.0. So they're giving this a 76. I'm higher on Peyton Turner than most people. And like I said, Amal, I said Peyton Turner was a better Gregory Rousseau and the NFL thought that too. Uh, he has the length. He has the size. He has bend that Gregory Rousseau doesn't have. Again, I, I just love so, buddy, comparing Peyton two Turner. Picks, to... By two picks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think they needed uh, – I think he and Marcus Davenport can be the future. Once, Because Cameron Jordan is like 32. He's going to retire eventually. I think while Cameron Jordan is there, Peyton Turner can learn. I'm going to give this a B-plus pick. Uh, I would have liked to see them go Kellen Mond here, but not really. Jameis Winston's fine. I like the player. I like the pick. It is what it is. Yeah, um, I'm going to give it a B here because uh, Aziz, Aziz Ozerlari was on the board. Jason Owe was still on the board, and I'm high on those guys than Peyton Turner. So. Fair enough. Uh, Personal uh, grades. Right. 29th overall pick, the Green Bay Packers still have not learned, even with Aaron Rodgers literally berating them on national media. Oh, God, this this pick was just as bad. Oh, shoot. I, how many Fs do I need to give in this draft? Shit. Now, for me, this is this a D minus, right? Yeah, and I think close. it's a D minus <laughs> because I think they needed a corner, right? Because, uh, frankly, Kevin King was just not it. He cost them a playoff game. They needed a corner. The problem is, bro, he Eric sucks Stokes. at defending the run. He sucks at defending the run. I'm just looking at my big board, right? I think I told you, I have him ranked as my 130th player, right? Uh, actually, not really. He's probably closer to like 110, right? 105. He's a second round to third round player for me. He's really fast, great press man coverage corner. Doesn't know how to turn his head he's around. Probably the when, fastest when he's player getting in the draft, 
Oh yeah, he might be the best player in this draft, but he doesn't know how to turn his head around. Really high ceiling player. He has this runs the in a straight size. Line. I like his ceiling, right? I just think with Jeremiah Wissakoromo on board or Tevin Jenkins on the board. Or... Calvin Joseph. There, you could even have a better corner, bro. Asante Samuel Jr. I don't even like Asante Samuel Jr. that high, but even he would be a better option here. Uh, it did, didn't make sense for me. That's yeah. It. I like I the guess position, and I like the I like the player too. I just don't like him this high. And I don't and know, they pissed bro. Aaron Rodgers off. They didn't pick pissed Aaron Rodgers even off even more. Like they just. They, they have no emotional either. IQ, no social intelligence. They're just like idiotic. We're going to move on before Pat- Packers fans become even more. Yeah. Depressed. Yeah. I'm with the 30th overall, with the thir- yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. With the 30th overall pick, the, the Buffalo Bills, like Gregor Rousseau, edge out of Miami. This, this for me was a C minus. And that's purely because I'm low on Gregor Rousseau. Yeah. I feel that though. I think I'm all, they, the Buffalo Bills, I think they had more pressing needs because they got beat in the playoffs because they couldn't stop passing game of Patrick Mahomes and I think Gregory Rousseau for me is a developmental player I think they could have had a more impactful who's a player at the cornerback position who is just a flat out better player than Gregory Rousseau is right now and they could have gotten more impact from that I'm just thinking like Calvin Joseph even JOK uh, there's a lot of corners they could have gone with even like I don't know if you ought to Mel Fonu, Paulson Adiba, those are guys I think are better than Gregory Rousseau right now I think they could have gone that way Gregory Rousseau High upside player, but I don't even know how athletic he is at this point, bro. Like, people say he's super athletic. I think Jason Owe was more athletic. I'm done hearing that. I'm done hearing (laughs) So, uh, I'm going to give it a B plus uh, because I actually kind of like him. Uh, The only reason I couldn't go higher is because Zizo Jolari and Jason Owe were better options here. But I love Gregory Russo. I I love Gregory Russo. And hey, maybe they'll maybe they'll make him both. It's 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 a high reward pick Uh, if he Mm -hmm. could really become special here. Maybe like a Mario Williams type of player. And they have Mario Williams on the roster. Maybe a yeah. Maybe they make him bulk up and play a three tech along with Ed Oliver. Because Gregor Russo is a three tech defensive tackle position. When he's playing on top of the guard, he's a great pass rush from the interior. Because uh, there's less technique needed. There. He can play. Yeah, that's that's the thing. If he plays, he can play in there early, and he, then maybe he can, if be, he actually... he can be very special at three tech for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, next that is what pick, it is. Next pick, my 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 other guy, man. It just so happened to read the two players you didn't expect to be picked in the first round. No, so I thought Jason Owe would be picked first first in the first. I not just in the first, first round, back to back picks. I mean, it mm-hmm. could not have happened any better. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens selected uh, my guy Jason Owe from uh, Penn State, uh, ultra athlete. Uh, yeah, the, the the problem here was this. I I didn't like the pick here. Uh, it, it, that being said. The, I think the Ravens are probably the only team that can develop uh, Jason Owe. Uh, like you, like you said, Reeb, uh, there's not many teams that can, but I think this team hundred yeah. percent can, and they've proven they, they can develop pass rushers in the pipeline very well. And uh, they have Calais Campbell there as well. Uh, there's, there's just so many. They lost a lot of edge rushers in all in this year's free agency class. And they lost Yannick. They lost a couple. Uh, I don't even remember their names anymore. They lost, a few, like, I think, two or three edge rushers. I knew they were going to go either edge rusher here or tackle. And the reason I'm going to give this a B minus, right? Higher than Gregory Rousseau, by the way, because I like Jason Oye way more than I like Gregory Rousseau. But the reason why is because Tevin Jenkins is on the board, bro. And he just traded away Orlando Brown. You're long, you're not long time. You're t- starting tackle. You traded him away to the chiefs, which is how you got that, this first round pick from the chiefs. I think going that way would have been better. That being said, Jason, no you need massive edge help uh, in a pretty uh, like offensively heavy division and conference in the AFC getting a high ceiling pass rusher. And again, uh, I think, the only, there are only two teams I think that could have developed him to his full potential. One was the Minnesota Vikings because they did the same thing in Daniel With Hunter. Daniel Hunter and, yeah. and the other one was the Ravens just because they have a really good – they just have a good ability of developing any edge who steps into that building period. So I, I like the player here, and I like the pick. I just think they could have gone tackle and would have been a more pressing need. But it is what it is. I'll give it a B plus, a B minus. And now for me, the best out of these three edge rushers – the 32nd overall pick, last pick in the first round, the Cincinnati, not the Cincinnati Bengals, bro, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Joe Tryon, the edge out of Washington. I love him. High upside player, really great first step, really great 
uh, power. He got doubled a lot because they have a lot of three down fronts in Washington last year when he played in 2019. Didn't play in 2020, and I think he got his body right. Dude, this guy is a freak athlete for me, and I love what he can do. He can learn from Shaq Barrett, dude. And he, if he, he can be a rotational pass rusher right now, and he could be perfectly fine for the for the Bucks. I love this pick. Probably one of my favorite picks in this in this year's uh, first round class. So I'll give it an A minus. Yeah, I'll give it a B plus. Uh, I thought this was a pretty good pick. Uh, just completely solidifying that D line. Oh my god, dude! They brought scary. back all their starters. They too, brought man. back That's everyone. Ridiculous. This pick was honestly a depth pick. If anything, they didn't need. They didn't need Joe Tryon. Dude, but... they can play him behind Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaquille Barrett. Exactly. And <laughs> and, and his exactly. interior is Vita Vea and Indomik and Sue. So yeah, guess what? Maybe you can move in JPP inside and put in. Like put uh, put Joe to try on. If you're doing outside. depth, uh, I think a, a, be- a better pick here would maybe have been Christian Barmore or Aziz Ojolari. I would have probably preferred. It doesn't him. even matter, bro. Defense. But I don't line. think it matters because I, I genuinely think this dude will somehow make an impact. They're winning the Super Bowl again. He probably won't even Bowl. get that many minutes because those starter, all 22 Super Bowl starters are on the team, uh, which is incredible. Um, we've covered every pick in this 2021 NFL Draft mm-hmm. first round. Uh, we'll be back most likely mm-hmm. for day two. We'll go, we'll give a recap of that. Uh, hopefully it's not as bad as last year's and Arib does not, uh, become depressed. I think depressed was the word Arib. I am being yeah. dead honest. Arib was very upset in the last day two. Uh, hopefully, uh, it turns around better for the Eagles and hopefully the Colts can somehow get a third round pick because since we gave ours to the Eagles and the Eagles used that to get Devontae Smith. So, um, Hopefully, uh, we both have a successful day too. And uh, yeah, and yeah, before we hop say. out of this, Amal, I've got to. I just want to run through like five to ten names who fell out of the first round this year. First of all, Tevin Jenkins is my eleventh ranked player, offensive through tackle three from Oklahoma State. This guy's a mauler, tenacious, ferocious, great pass blocker, great run blocker. He's just a mauler. Second, Jeremiah Jeremiah Wusukuromoa out of. Notre Dame, the linebacker slash safety slash nickelback. This guy is super versatile. This year's Isaiah Simmons, the smaller, but way faster. Love him. Kevin Joseph, cornerback out of Kentucky. He's my cornerback three. He was going to fall due to character concerns. I think he told like the Kentucky, like coaching stance, coaching staff to go like fuck off or something. Like, I don't know what he did, bro, but they hated him and they literally told him to like leave and they just weren't mad when he opted out. So, yeah, but he's someone I really like. Great coverage corner. Shut down Devonta Smith. Javante Williams, running back out of UNC. He's been running back too, my 19th ranked player. Uh, he's the combination of Najee Harris and Travis Etienne. Phenomenal. Aziz Ojolari, edge out of Georgia. My edge three, 21th ranked player. Great speed rusher off the edge. Great pass rusher. Landon Dickerson, uh, interior offensive lineman out of Alabama. He plays literally every single offensive lineman spot. Does it really at high level. Super powerful, super strong. Has four season ending injuries, which is why he fought, probably fell out. Terrence Marshall Jr., I'm all wide receiver four for me. Uh, a wide receiver five, actually, out of LSU. Great, tall, six foot four, great speed, great deep throw, good hands, great everything. Asante Samuel Jr., my cornerback five out of FSU. He fits for me as the Jair Alexander role. He can play slot corner, but can also play outside corner. He's five foot 10, but he has great instincts, great mobility, all that. Creed Humphrey, probably, right? A tackle, a center out of Alabama, uh, out of Oklahoma, rather. And the last two would probably be Trayvon Morick, first of all, safety t- out of TCO. TCU, both the, the Moore brothers, who aren't actually brothers, uh, wide receivers, smaller slot wide receivers who are extremely explosive, Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore. And then the finally, the last two defensive tackles, Levi and Wizarike and Christian Barmore out of Washington, Alabama. Those are probably the 10 top guys that I saw who fell out of the first round, who definitely could have gone in the first round. And those are the 10 names I think teams should be watching out, especially the top 10 teams in this year's class, because legitimately in, in the top 10 teams in the second round could draft all those players and they can all be gone. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd mm-hmm. like to add probably Liam Eikenberg mm-hmm. and Ronnie Perkins. Oh, yeah, Liam Eikenberg and Dylan Radunes too. Those two tackles and Ronnie Perkins, like you said, edge out of Oklahoma. Yeah, that is it for me though, I'm all, uh, unless you have anything else to add. No, I'm, I'm, uh, this is a great day one. Never hasn't let me down. Great draft day. Uh, probably recap day two, but that's it. Yeah, and I'm exhausted. Maybe I'll go edit this video. Who knows? But anyway, thanks for listening. I am hyped that 
Howie Rosen didn't screw up. And that is it for me. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Peace out and bye.